Hello class, today we are going to be talking about postulates and also some more about diagrams. We're going to talk about those a lot, all year long. Anyways, postulates. Uh, what a postulate is, if you remember, we've talked about this before, this is a rule that we are going to accept as true and as valid without having actual proof. It's kind of like those undefined terms, point, line, and plane, where we can't really define them, but we're just going to kind of go with it. All right. Uh, postulates, these are things, they work every single time. They have never failed us, but we can't really prove it with a good logical proof. And so we're just going to go with it. And these are things that are based on assumptions in planar geometry. Some of these will not be true if you're looking at spherical geometry. All right. For example, the first one here, the two-point postulate. Through any two points, there exists exactly one line. All right. If we talk about on a flat surface, on a plane, then yeah, these are that's the only line I can draw through point A and point B. If we were talking about on a sphere, well, I could draw some other lines through points A and B, and we could actually have two. Uh, but we're dealing with planar geometry, so it's a postulate. We can't really prove it, but it always works as long as we make some basic assumptions that we're on a flat surface. All right. And that's through any two points. So not only is there a line through point A and point B, there's also a line through point A right here and point F way down here. All right? Or that F, either one, or D or E. All of these, I could draw one line through those two points and only one line through those two points. All right? uh, then we have the line point postulate. What the line point postulate says is that a line contains at least two points, which considering the definition of a line says that it is infinite, and so it has an infinite number of points. Yeah, it's pretty obvious it's going to have at least two of them. All right. And we have this over here. We have some sentences here. Through points A and B, there exists exactly one line, which is line L. And line L contains at least two points. We're not going to say at least two points A and B because that sounds like there's more than one A and there's more than one B, but it, only one point can have that name. All right. All right. Next we have. Line intersection postulate. And don't worry about these numbers right here. Just about every textbook is going to have these in a different order, so they'll have different numbers. And so just don't worry about the numbers. What's important is the title. All right, so line intersection postulate says if two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. All right, so two lines will intersect at one point and only at one point. Because right? we're on a flat surface, and so line N can't curve around and hit line M somewhere else, right? Obviously, if we were on a sphere, then yeah, it would be curving around and hitting line M somewhere else. But on a flat surface, that's it. All right? So the intersection of line M and line N is point C. All right? All right. So next we have the three-point postulate. Through any three non-collinear points, there exists exactly one plane. All right, now, one thing very, very important here, this does have to be three non-collinear points. If the three points are in a line, then you have an infinite number of planes that could contain that line. It's very important that they are non-collinear. That spreads it out, and it does have to be just one plane. All right, you can't have two planes that contain those three points. Only one. Uh, so through points D, E, and F, there's exactly one plane, which is plane R. That's it. And the plane point postulate, which says that a plane contains at least three non-collinear points. All right. And again, planes are infinite. They have an infinite number of points. So, yeah, they're going to have at least three that are non-collinear. Okay. Plane R contains at least three non-collinear points. All right, so let's take a look at these next ones here. We have the plane line postulate. It says that if two points lie on a plane, then the line containing them lies in the plane. All right, so as we said up here, if we have two points, there is a line that contains those two points, right? And so what we have here, if those two points happen to be inside plane R, then the line that contains those two points is also inside plane R. So since line D... In line, uh, point D and E are in plane R, then line D, E also lies in plane R. Okay. Uh, the last one we have here is the plane intersection postulate. 
and it says if two planes intersect, then their intersection is a line. All right. So here we have plane S and plane T, and we see that they intersect right here at line L. So the intersection of plane S and plane T is line L. All right. And so that's not too bad. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, so let's open this up and see what we can do with it. Right. So first, state the postulate that is illustrated by the diagram. So our first one we have if, and then it gives us three points, some points there, and it says then, and we have a line going through the points, line K. All right, so let's see, which of our postulates could it be? If we have some points, then we can draw lines through the points. Let's see, through any two points there exists exactly one line is the best one we've got. Now this says just two points, and we do have three points in the diagram. But still, we do have them going through one line. And, but there is only one line that's going to go through those points, isn't there? I couldn't have line K going through these points and line F going through these points as well, right? And that's the thing. There's only one. So this is still the two-point postulate. I know there's three points on here, but this is still the two-point postulate. Two-point postulate. Next one, we have if, and then we have plane S with some points on it. Then plane S has a line in it. All right. And what would that be? Right. Well, let's see. Let's flip back here. Plane has some points. Then it has lines. There it is, the plane line postulate. If two points are on the plane, then the line containing those points is also on the plane. So that's what we have here, the plane line postulate. That was hyphenated, wasn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. So this is the plane line postulate. The plane line postulate. All right, next, what do we have? We have use the diagram to write an example of the postulate. So what we're going to do is we are going to write a sentence that is an example that was shown in the diagram, All right. much like these sentences that we have here. Okay, so the first one we have is the two-point postulate. So let's see, we just talked about that right up there. The two-point postulate said that if there's two points, then we have a line going through those two points, and only one line going through those two points. And so in our diagram, where do we have that? We need two points with a line going through them. That would be line L going through point B and C. And yes, we could say something about a line going through A and B or A and C, but I wouldn't be able to name it because that's not in the diagram. We want to be able to say this is the only line there, and we can't see it. So we're not going to do that. We're going to use line L going through point B and point C. So what we will say is through points B and C, points B and C, there exists exactly one line L. There exists exactly one line L. And remember, lines use lowercase cursive letters. Ah. Next one, the line point postulate. Line point postulate. What did that one say? Line point. Line point postulate. A line contains at least two points. All right. So that's what we need. We need a line, and we need to say that it has at least two points. And preferably, want, we want those two points to be visible in the diagram, as an example. And so we could use line K, but it only has one point. So let's use line L again. So line L contains at least two points. Line L contains at least, and it could have more, two points. All right, there, we go. line point partially. What do we have next? The plane point postulate. Let's see, what was that one? The plane point postulate was 
a plane contains at least three non-collinear points. All right. So much like the line point posture, only this is for planes, and planes have three points, not two. All right. Because they have to be non-collinear. Any two points will be collinear. We need non-collinear. Uh, so, what plane can we use? What plane can we use? Well, we have plane Q, but there's only one point shown in plane Q. So, let's use P because it does have those three points shown in plane P. So, plane P contains at least, I mean, there could be more, and there definitely are more, at least three. Very important that these we do specify that these are non-collinear, non-collinear points. Right. And the last one is the plane intersection postulate. Let's see. Plane intersection postulate says if two planes intersect, then their intersection is a line. So we need two planes that intersection in a line for our diagram here and that would be plane p and plane q intersecting right here at line k so that's what we will say plane p and plane q intersect at line K. Right. So there it is. Basically just taking these, putting them in sentences, not a big deal. All right. Sketch a diagram. Sketch a diagram of the description. Okay, so this can get a little weird sometimes. Not too bad. All right. We have segment RS bisects segment KL at point R. Okay, so we have segment RS is going to go through segment KL. It's going to bisect. So let's, let's go ahead and draw KL. All right, so there's K, there's point L, and I have segment KL, and I need segment RS to bisect it at point R. So what that means is point R has to be on KL. And since it bisects it, it has to be at the midpoint. So I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to draw RS right like that. Now, just by looking at this, can I assume that R is the midpoint of KL? And no, you can't assume that. I just freehanded this. Y'all watched me. I didn't measure anything. I didn't do any kind of constructions. So what can I put in the diagram to show that R is going to be the midpoint so that it bisects it? And that is going to be these little tick marks like so. That shows that this segment is congruent to that segment, and therefore R is bisecting segment KL. All right. Very important you have those tick marks because measurements and things like that cannot be assumed. Okay. We can assume that the line is supposed to be straight. We can assume that, yeah, they do intersect right there. We cannot assume that those are congruent. Okay, so the next one we have, we have plane, oh, sorry, segment AB in plane U, and it intersects segment CD at point E, and point C is not on plane U. So we got a lot of this stuff here. Let's see, the biggest shape that we have is going to be plane U. So let's start with plane U. That's the biggest thing we got. So remember, planes are parallelograms, just like that up there. Okay, so we've got plane. i got to name it U, so we'll just stick with U right there. Huh? Okay, plane U. I need segment AB is going to be in the plane. So let's put segment AB in the plane. There's A, and we'll put B right there. And okay, there's my segment. And C, segment CD is going to intersect it at point E. Okay, so let's put point E right there. Doesn't say it's the midpoint, so I can put it wherever I want. That will be point E. And so I need to draw segment CD going through segment AB at that point. But remember, 
C is not on plane U. So I'm going to start C way up here above the plane. And then we'll come down here, hit E, and then it's going to go through the plane and down to the underneath side, right? And so to show that it's going underneath the plane, it's on the other side of the plane, we're going to use a dotted line. Until we get here, and then we can do a straight line. Over. And we can put point D there. And now we have segment CD intersecting segment AB at point E, and CD is not on the same plane as AB. All right. So that one was a little bit more difficult, but not much. Okay, now let's take a look at this diagram up here. And what we want to do is use the diagram to determine whether we can assume the statement to be true statement. All right, let's see. It does not ask us to explain, which saves us some time, but we're going to explain anyways. All right, you just don't have to write down. So here we go. We've got plane A and B intersect at segment EF. So we have plane A, plane B, there is segment EF, and it looks like they intersect, doesn't it? Except there's one small problem. The plane intersection postulate says that planes do not intersect at a segment, do they? Planes intersect at a line, not a segment. And so this, unfortunately, is going to have to be false because planes intersect at lines, not at segments. All right. If it had said line EF, then we'd be good and everything's just fine. But it doesn't, so they don't. All right, points C and D are collinear. We have C right there, we have D down there. Can we assume that those two points are collinear? I don't see a line going through them. However, that very first postulate said two points contain exactly one line, any two points, whether there's a line there or not. And so this is going to be a true statement. Now, if it had been three points, like, for example, if I had said C, E, and G, those look like they might be collinear, right? But it cannot be assumed with three points. With three points, you have to have that line drawn through them. With two points, it's always going to be that. Okay, so segment HJ and segment ID are perpendicular. So let's see, where's HJ? HJ is just from here to there, just looking at the segment piece of that. And ID is here to there. And so are those perpendicular? Can we assume that to be true? Yes, actually we can because we have the little right angle marking right there. So this is going to be true because it is marked that way. All right. Could we just assume it if it didn't have the marking? No. If you don't have the marking, then it, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Like over here, line K and line L, they look pretty close to perpendicular, but I couldn't assume it one way or the other. I don't know. Because right, there's no marking there. Okay. Next, we have segment GD is a bisector of segment EF at point D. Okay, so there is GD right here. We have EF right there, does intersect at D. Can we assume that it is bisecting at point D? Yes, we can. Right? We couldn't assume that down here for it because it wasn't marked, right? And so we marked it so we could show it. Here, it is marked. And so since it's marked, then we can assume that this is true. So we're going to say this is a true thing. We can assume that to work. All right. And here I have a typo, because this says segment IH is equal to segment HG. And that doesn't work. Shapes can't be equal. Measurements of the shapes could be equal. Shapes, oops, if I use the skinny side of this, shapes are congruent. Okay. So let's see. Segment IH is congruent to segment HG. Well, they look pretty good, don't they? Look to be the same. We could, maybe they're congruent. However, can we assume it? No. Because if this is off by even a tenth of a millimeter, they're not congruent. And so what would need to happen is just like with ED and EDF, it has to be marked that way. And it is not marked that way. So we are going to call this false. All right. Next, we have angle HJD. So that would be this angle right here. And angle HDJ, so HDJ would be this angle right here, 
He says they are complementary angles. All right. Complementary means, of course, that they add up to 90 degrees. Are they marked in any way that would make them look like they add up to 90 degrees? Well, they don't have any measurements on them or nothing like that. However, these two angles do form a triangle, right? Triangle JDH, which is a right angle, triangle. And if you remember, the sum of the measures of any triangle, the angle, interior angles, is going to be 180 degrees. You should have learned that back in middle school sometime. So what that means is that the measure of angle, let's see, what do we have here? H, J, D, you want to name it the same as it is here, plus the measure of angle H, D, J, plus the measure of angle J, H, D, has to equal 180 degrees, right? Well, I know that this is 90. So I have, this is 90. And so I can subtract that 90 from both sides, because it's got the right angle, right? So it's 90. And I end up with the measure of angle HJD plus the measure of angle HDJ equals 90 degrees. Right? And so, since this one's 90 degrees, that means those two have to add up to 90 degrees, which means they are complementary angles. Even though there's nothing like specifically says, hey, this one's 43 and that one's 47, they still, whatever they are, they do have to add up to 90 degrees because that one is 90 degrees. And so that one we are going to say is true. Right, so that one's a little bit trickier. But we do have rules and things that we know to be true that can lead us to assume that that is true. All right. So the only things you can really assume without having any kind of marking is one, straight lines are straight. We're going to assume that that line really is supposed to be straight. These lines that I drew down here really are supposed to be straight. We can assume that. All right. We can assume that things intersect where it appears that they intersect. All right. That line really is the intersection between plane A and B. Point D really is the intersection between these two lines. We can assume that. All right. What we cannot assume... Okay, and we can also assume things are where they appear to be. We can assume that C really is on plane A. All right? We can assume that point E is inside angle JHD. Those are things we can assume. We can assume that G is between D and H. What we cannot assume is anything that has to do with a precise location, with any kind of measurement. We cannot assume the lengths of these two are the same, not without some kind of marking to show it. We cannot assume that this is a right angle unless it has a marking to show it. We cannot assume anything that has anything to do with any kind of measurements. That can't be assumed. That has to be marked. All right? So there it is. And that is, a, again, a review over what you can assume in, in the diagrams and introduction to some of the very most basic of our geometric postulates. And so I hope you find that helpful. And I will see you in the next video.